Thanks for checking out this video. I am doing something, uh, well, exciting to me, a modem. I'm upgrading a 40 year old modem. Now, I assume if you're watching this, you like modems, you've used modems, maybe you want to know more. So being a, an Atari guy, these are some of the Atari modems. Well, this is my first one. This is the MPP-1000C. It actually plugged into the joystick of the Atari computer which was a cheap way of getting some kind of modem onto my old, well, new to me then, Atari 8-bit, Atari 400 computer. Now, the reason I say the cheaper way was it didn't need a serial interface, as opposed to, example, this first Atari modem, which is really a rebranded modem, uh, which was a coupler, acoustic coupler modem that uses used the serial port for... Uh, well, whatever computer you had this on. So if you had an Atari 8-bit, which didn't include a serial port, and most early computers did not, you needed an interface for it. And at that point, Atari went uh, the route of building in the serial interface, per se, into your Atari so that you use the SIO port for this, the XM301, or the 1030 modem, uh, or the uh, SX modem later that worked uh, with the SIO port, I can just show that, worked with the SIO port and also had a serial port on it. But back in the day, modems connected via serial ports primarily, and that brings us to the Hayes modem. First it was the Hayes smart modem, and then the smart modem 1200, 9600, and so forth. The beauty on this is it had the standard serial port in there, so it could connect to any system and your uh, telephone line didn't use acoustic coupler, it used the uh, RJ connector. Had built-in lights on it. You can see here in the down shot to show you on hook, send data, receive data, and other things. But the biggest thing is it had the Hayes AT command set in it. The Hayes smart modem used what they created was the AT command set so that you could talk to it through ASCII from your terminal to tell it to dial, tell it to change other settings in the modem. It was really cool. This modem came out about 1982 at a price of about $700, which is over $2,000 today. So imagine you had your computer, you wanted to get on the internet today, stuttering because of this, that you spent over $2,000 so you could connect it to your phone line crazy isn't it so nowadays we just use wi-fi and this doesn't have wi-fi in it it's it's 40 42 42 years old now but if you got the wi-fi retro modem from tatler systems this actually goes inside the uh, Hayes smart modem case uh, a few of them like the the original i believe the original smart modem the smart modem 1200 some of the older, um, well, later modems at that point from Hayes, they moved the LEDs on here a little bit. It's shifted off a little bit, but I believe this still fits in there. You can, I'll put a link, of course, for that in the description down here. But all I have to do is take the back off of this, slide out the 42-year-old modem board, slide in the um, nearly zero-year-old Wi-Fi replacement, you get the lights, you get Wi-Fi, serial to your computer, uh, pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and get into that. Uh, oh, I did also want to show, this is the uh, uh, Wii, Wii 32 modem. I'll put a link for this too. If you don't have a smart modem, a Hey Smart modem, or if you don't want to go this route, uh, this is... Um, I forgot how much this is, 40, 50, 60 bucks. This is, uh, I believe, 90 bucks. Uh, so under $100, uh, you could get this replacement. Now, I didn't have a, a Hey Smart modem, so I bought this separate, as well as, um, I didn't, uh, full disclosure, I didn't pay for this. Uh, Scott Swayze from Tatler Systems uh, caught me at VCF SoCal 2024 a few months ago, and uh, went ahead and handed this to me. It was very nice of him. 
because uh, I, I am very much into modems. So I get a chance to try this out. I have worked with it a little bit, but I haven't put it in the case yet. I didn't have the modem originally, uh, the old modem. So uh, this is a Wi-Fi modem. Pretty much does the same as this, except uh, it just has a little display on it, which is very informative. So I definitely recommend this as well. But if you want to go the cooler route, which is to upgrade an old Hayes smart modem. Well, did I say lights on here before? It was backwards. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and install this and we're going to go over here on the uh, Atari Falcon and hook it up and try it out. So let's see. I've got uh, my handy, trusty VCF SoCal screwdriver. <laughs> there we go. All you have to do is take out the two screws on the back, uh, on the bottom and the back. That's easy enough. I'm going to move this so I don't drop on it. Oh, if you've noticed the uh, speaker, so the Hayes has a speaker. You'd hear the phone line dialing. So uh, Scott went ahead and designed that to do the same thing. So that's really the, uh, one of the fun parts and the lights on it. Let's pop off this backing without breaking anything. Let's see here. Should be able to pop this tab up. Ooh, thank God. There we go. Okay. Probably hasn't been budged in 42 years. The board in here hasn't seen the light of day in 42 years. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I reached over to get my plastic doodads. Okay, let's try that. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. That does not want to give up the ghost here. Okay. Got it. Nice. Okay, just plastic tabs in there. But again, 42-year-old plastic. And um, you need this because uh, Scott designed this to fit perfectly back on. Okay, we have removed the screws that hold the board in. So here we go. Let's see how this 42, I assume 42, right? 42-year-old interface board. Okay, nice. Nice and clean. It's always fun to look at these. Um, no dust, no cockroaches, no dead animals, no spider webs. So pretty good on that. So now let's take a look at the two of them together. Do a front slot. Now the speaker's on the bottom. And uh, this is just sitting on the top here in order to hold it in place. But it, it goes down here. So we'll install this upside, not upside down, but work with it that way. So there we go. We've got the lights are all lining up, the LEDs. Oh, I forgot about the dip switches on the front of this. I don't think you can access that though here. Nope. So the technology, uh, we've got a serial interface to convert to and then the phone connector and all the brains and now all the brains are down to a few chips and uh, a Wi-Fi uh, adapter built on there so that this actually does a lot more in a lot smaller space. Probably could have just left a big open hole in the middle maybe here but that wouldn't matter at that point you've already used the perf board. So pretty good. Let me show you the here. You can see this all lines up. Now Scott said his instructions. The instructions on it say that you don't need to put the two screws back in on the bottom. And as you can see, the plastic is not going to come off that easy. So pretty nice. Okay. Out with the working but old. We'll save that, of course. And let's slide in the new. So this is the top. I'm going to turn it upside down. Slide this in with the speaker. You should see the slots here for the speaker. Ah, oh, so nice. Ha, huh. it's cool. 
That's cool, man. Now, we don't have a uh, two line or two phone, the line or phone connectors, but we have the RS-232 and we have the power connector, which is smaller and the power switch. And we'll just pop that on. Even popping it on, I don't want to break the old tabs. Click in the place. Okay, there we go. It, it's, it's definitely lighter. This is, wow, I think this board is heavier than this whole thing. So there we go. Upgraded. An old Hayes Smart Modem 1200 from about 1982 and ready to hook up. So let's go back here and uh, see how this works out. Okay, here we are with the Atari Falcon 030. Power that up, turn on the modem. There we go. Let's go ahead and skip the uh, test on here. Now, we're going to run QMI ST Talk, which uh, we're running it simply because I used to work there in the uh, mid to late 80s. And uh, this is ST Talk version 1.1. I've already loaded it on uh, to the hard drive here on the Falcon. I am running uh, VGA output into this old Dell monitor. And this is monochrome compatibility mode. Let's just start that couple clicks skip the date and time let's switch over to a tasky mode you can see in the top right up there at the ASCII that is uh, tasky that's actually Atari XE mode uh, let's set the baud rate to 1200 there we go uh, the Wi-Fi retro modem defaults to 1200 baud so just change it in the software and let's see what we got here. Okay, so that's information from the modem. Now it's not doing line uh, feeds. It's, I've got an Atari mode. Let's go out of that. You can see here, ATZ, ATI. Okay, let's call a BBS. Now we're not connected to a phone line. So what this is gonna do, it's on Wi-Fi. I've already set up uh, the Wi-Fi network uh, in here. Oh, let's take a quick look there. I forgot. Go into the config mode or menu, that is. And this is the new technology in the Wi-Fi retro modem where you can set the Wi-Fi and other aspects of the connection. That's not part of the original Hayes AT command set. Well, all these AT commands are, and there's a lot more if you check out the manual for this or the, the doc file per se. Uh, let's go ahead and call a Nightlight BBS. And it is a Telnet address. And this is what you can do. Uh, you can use muffin term on your iPhone if you've got that or terminal on your computer. And this is it's one of the cool things about this faux, the faux dialing. It's, it is hilarious. Uh, let me go back to Atari text mode. Okay. It is hilarious that it does that. It's one of the coolest things. And then you can see the lights on the front uh, blinking as uh, we have uh, connections and so forth. Now, the software, the computer, whatever, the uh, Atari uh, Atasky mode isn't working well. Uh, for me here, but we can definitely get into the BBS. Yes, the Vintnerd. Okay, don't look. And we're in. No, let's not do that, and let's skip okay skip the graffiti wall now we could set the software and the modem uh, to a higher baud rate uh, and this would load a lot quicker uh, but it's at the default 1200 baud which 
you know, if you can kind of remember how that used to be. Let's see. Oh, I left off in the menu I was in last. So here we are in the BBS. And uh, if you've never used a BBS or it's been a long time you don't remember, you probably remember. You can uh, send feedback to the sysop, chat with the sysop, send messages, check the uh, message bases, upload software, download software. So let's take a quick look here. Look, uh, who called last? Right here, this W. Ah, the Vintner, of course, because I'm on it. And a few, uh, Amos and so forth. Uh, let's do, go back to the menu. What else have we got in here? Uh, extra features. I can't remember if this board has uh, the little game in it. Go back out. Okay. Well, that gives you a good idea of how this modem works. Um, let's go ahead and actually log off here. G for goodbye. Nope. Goodbye. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just dial. You can dial anything. It's not going to connect to anything, but that faux dialing. Oh, it's busy. So sorry. But that's the cool. I don't have any other, I don't think I do, have any other uh, Wi-Fi modem type device that actually has uh, the faux dialing. Um, I don't know if they call it that. I just made that up, faux dialing, uh, as opposed to maybe fax dialing, which well, a lot of people still do. Uh, well, let me know in the comments. Did you get one of these? Have you tried it out? Have you seen anything else like this? Something else I should check out? Uh, oh, I want to point out my OmniFixo helping hands is actually helping hold this up at the right angle to get to the, to the camera there. So... Uh, let me know how, how it's going, if you've got one, and uh, any other comments. Appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Ciao.